Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Wednesday, December 12th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Snow's falling in Mexico. Snow's falling tomorrow in Central Texas. Say it ain't snow, but it is. Record snow tilting British Columbia and Washington State in the coming weeks. Those in Central Florida that woke up this morning, it was 29. Boom! Yeah, it's boom time. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be ugly. Frost, freezing temperatures hit central Florida. Yeah, a week and a half out from actual winter. Ocala sees temps plummet to 29 degrees. We've seen record die-offs of manatees over the last several years. Record sea turtles freezing off North Carolina. Orlando, Florida, some Central Floridians are waking up to frost Wednesday and dead plants as temperatures dropped into the 30s and 40s across the region. At 7 a.m., Ocala saw the low hit 29. Most other areas were above freezing, including Palm Coast at 34, Orlando at 40, but a frost advisory was in effect for most of Central Florida until 8 a.m. Heads up, Florida. Sorry you moved there. New storm moving east with snow, strong wind and rain. A new storm is firing up in the west and it will bring stormy weather to most of the country over the next four days. Already up to two feet of snow has been reported in parts of the northwest. While more than four inches of rain also fell in some areas, the storm system begins to move east, bringing flooding rains to the east coast in four days. Numerous snow and wind alerts have been issued in the west as the storm moves through. Heads up, Utah. You didn't have a good driving day. The storm system will move through the Rockies today in the afternoon with more than a foot of snow possible in some areas. Oh, and that will lead to accidents galore. We'll get to that. On Thursday, the storm will begin to move into the plains and the Gulf Coast with heavy rain and thunderstorms affecting those regions that just experienced snow. Some wet snow is possible on the backside. Heads up, Central Texas. But there is a little chance of snow from this system, an extreme chance of flooding. Check out your Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Heavy rain through St. Louis, Memphis. Heads up. Flooding rains on the coast here of South Carolina. On Friday night and Saturday morning, the system will begin to send heavy rain up the East Coast in the I-95 corridor up to NYC, Philly. Heads up for your Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time flooding event. That flooding is going to hit Raleigh and other areas hard hit by the snow. This is going to cause flash flooding in many areas with deep snow. The main band of snow here is luckily the least hit with rain. We'll see flooding on the coast for most of southern North Carolina, most of South Carolina, a heavy swath of flooding rain through central Florida, and flooding through most of Arkansas. Say it ain't snow. It's not. It's rain. Two to four inches through most of your Memphis. Are you picking it up? Cosmic Ray Flux. Totally inundating the country. Update. 98 crashes reported during Utah snowstorm. If you read the article, it's up over 200 now. <laughs> the Utah Highway Patrol says there have been over 200 crashes and slide-offs of statewide due to Wednesday's storm. 35 of those wrecks happened in Davis County alone. 114 of those crashes resulted in property damage or injuries. Many Mormons were hurt. The Utah Highway Patrol UHUP, reported 98 crashes in Salt Lake and Utah counties. In a tweet Wednesday morning, UHP cautioned drivers to stay safe and avoid traveling in a hurry during a snowstorm. After the tweet, 98 people immediately crashed. There were over 20 accidents across the Wasatch Front. Roads are slick and snow is sticking. Time is ticking. Al Gore is missing. Drivers are advised to slow down, keep your distance in between cars, and avoid driving if possible. Too bad you're a slave and you have to go to work no matter what they say. Or else you won't even be able to pay rent or buy groceries. How about them apples? Stick with us. I'm going to show you a way to escape at the end of this update. If you don't think you have enough money, but you have some money, some funny money, and you don't know what to do with it, how about starting our own city 
We're going to get to that. Snow showers will linger into the lunch hour. A winter weather advisory has been issued for northern Utah. The mountains are expected to get at least one inch of snow. Ho, ho. He's got his favorite red tie on. That's power tie. The roads are expected to be slick, so be sure to drive carefully during the morning commute. While traveling in snow, remember to clean your windshield. Leave early. Full tank of gas. Maybe some porn in the back seat. You never know. The latest snow map through Thursday shows scattered showers in western PA. One to three inches up by the lake. Some snow showers will arrive 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. this evening in our western counties of PA. Scattered snow will continue to fall throughout the overnight hours, especially lake effect. Yeah, we're going to get to the models. New Jersey weather. Snow showers expected for Thursday morning commute up in the north where most of the pollution in the country comes from. Take a look. Amazing. The snowstorm that caused commuting nightmare on Thursday night finally breaks up on Friday morning. There will be widespread snow showers in North Jersey on Thursday morning and they're forecast to hit right smack in the middle of the commute. On Thursday, rain and snow is expected for most of New Jersey, but in North Jersey, snow will mix with rain and be a pain. Yes, new people get their car to head to work, a weather report said. Unfortunately, they're thinking the precipitation spreads across North Jersey between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., and it just went white. Let's check the models. There's that snow in North Jersey, snow in northern PA. Some heavy snow dumping in to Washington State. Catskill front, heads up, 16 inches expected before next weekend. Let's move this model back and pause it. There's your next 12 hours. Several feet of snow coming into British Columbia. Heavy snow in Washington. And the Olympics will continue. Midday Thursday, Thursday late afternoon, Thursday night, heavy snow moving back now east towards Alberta. 10 to 16 inches predicted in the mountains, but heavy snow up to four feet will have already fallen in many areas in Washington State. In British Columbia, light slathering coming off of the lake here all the way into your Massachusetts and Connecticut. Some light flurries in the mountains before the rain moves east. And there's that snow forming in Texas on the back of this front that's going to cause flooding as it moves through the southeast in that snow region that just got record snow dump. And let's move it through. Here's your white Christmas coming. Most of Canada are going to be, have a full white Christmas here. We're going to see record snows, 20 feet in some areas, several feet on the Alberta, B.C. line here. So we're going to see record snows tilting the northwest over the next 10 days. Stay tuned. I cannot wait to report on these numbers. Snows falling far south into Baja and Mexico on the models. No one is spared. And this is all before, this is showing you all the way up to solstice. And then we're going to have a new band of snows covering the central plains through the beginning of winter. <clears throat> now, a powerful storm system to impact the southern plains and the Gulf Coast. Recap, Weather Ready Nation map. A vigorous storm system will develop over the southern plains and develop, deliver several threats on Thursday. Strong winds are expected across the region along with fire weather concerns from southeast New Mexico to south Texas. Check out the yellow zones. Do not flick your cigarettes out the window, kids. Even a few inches of snow will be possible in Texas, including just west of the DFW. High wind warnings from eastern Colorado all the way to the tip of Texas. Red flag warnings for most of the tip of Texas. This is the biggest fire threat. I'm circling it. Went to weather advisories in many counties in Colorado. Check it out as that heavy snow tilts the Cascades up in Washington State. Snoqualmie. Are you kidding me? Roads are closed. Hazardous storm to hit major BC highway with 30, 40 centimeters of snowfall. <clears throat> Yesterday, we told you Environment Canada issued a weather alert for the Coquihalla Highway from Hope to Merritt. 
The department predicted an intense Pacific frontal system would dump snow on the BC Highway through the night, accumulating 20 to 25 centimeters of snow. Now, the forecast calls for another dump, bringing another 30 to 40 as the numbers climb Thursday morning. A moist, unsettled air mass will maintain flurries through Wednesday. However, snowfall is expected to intensify through the evening and continue through the night Thursday morning, which is now where they're probably buried as we speak. As a result, the weather in the mountains, driving conditions may suddenly become hazardous, if not deadly. If visibility is reduced while driving, slow down. Watch for taillights ahead and be prepared to try to stop and not. <laughs> And that's tonight's first boom. 11 minutes and 16 seconds in. Newest weather warnings target snow squalls that catch many off guard, as if snow squalls are new to weather forecasting. They happen, especially when the mainstream media is told not to report on any major snow or record colds. Don't say it. Don't do it. They're pretending like snow squalls are new. Yellowstone volcano was hit by earthquake swarm of 2,500 tremors. This happened last year. Those of you that watch Mary Greeley or other fear monger channels that have been saying Yellowstone is about to erupt every single day of their entire lives. <coughs> you remember last year was epic. I, it, it boggled the mind. Guess what? Yellowstone isn't erupted yet. So those of you that think Dutch Sense is an excellent forecaster, did you know that he forecast a major earthquake in California over 17 times in the last three years? And there has been none? So he's good at forecasting predictable earthquakes in lower magnitude, which don't require a degree in anything. All you have to do is watch USGS for a week and you'll be as good as him. Or you can be lazy and continue to watch his show. Now Mary Greeley is another thing. She's been predicting that these rumblers were magma moving into the chambers. Well, according to actual scientific analysis, there was absolutely no magma moving with these swarms. The Maple Creek earthquake swarm and other multiple swarms that moved throughout the park last year are on strike and dip of known normal faults in the region. This is the area of basin and range which extends all the way up to Canada and all the way down into Nevada. This area of horst and grob and topography is a, would expect earthquake swarms like this if the earth was growing because these huge grobins were dropping down into the valleys, forming these swarms along lines, fault lines. Here, I'm drawing one right here. See these swarms all on this line? Boom, 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 boom. And this is the direction of most of the basin and range in this area. Now, further analysis showed that major hydrothermal activity was moving on these fault lines. So these lines were being lubricated by subsurface hydrothermal liquids, water, causing them to ever increase in their low magnitude M1 type earthquake swarms. Now, the fear mongers are picking up on steamboat geyser erupting more than ever before. But what I just showed you in this study was last year's seismic swarm was a result of geothermal hot water moving through known fault lines. And that would result in what Yellowstone is known for for the last thousand years. Hydrothermal activity migrating around the park haphazardly. And regularly, Steamboat erupted in the 60s just as many times as it did in 2018. And I bet you, and I haven't looked, but I will, that there was an earthquake swarm one year prior to Steamboat igniting. So I'm looking for an earthquake swarm back in 64. Now, the problem with me actually finding equivalent data is that in recent years, they put hundreds of new seismometers throughout Yellowstone which is why they have this amazing data from these swarms and why they were able to interpret it as not being magma at all and being hydrothermal fluid, which you would infer would result in new hydrothermal activity, i.e. steamboat geyser. No imminent eruption, no danger in Yellowstone, 
take your family and visit a major geologic wonder of the world. Be safe. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Get the facts. Unsubscribe to those shills. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Boom! Rock are just kicking off in Chile 4.6 one second ago at 107 kilometers. Many other earthquakes happening at that same depth in the last 24 hours. Here's 119 in India. Let's light it up. Boom, right there. We have a small flurry of activity <coughs> down in Vanuatu. All coming up near the surface. But there are quakes of note happening today. And in the New Madrid zone, we had an unprecedented 4.4 in Decatur, Tennessee, followed by a 3.0 aftershock. Now, if you guys don't know, I'm going to run you quickly through the Appalachian Fault Zone. Comes through the St. Lawrence Seaway here, moves down through Vermont. You can even see the line I'm tracing. And then it does a hook down here. Now, this Appalachian Fault, which is a shear zone up in here and a crack down in here, is part of the fault system that resulted in the New Madrid quake back in 1811. Winter of. Now, if we add the 206-year relational cycle from John Casey to 1811, you get 2017, which means we are right on the crosshairs of repeating this earthquake within the next two years. There has been an uptick in the last 18 months with over 80 earthquakes registering on the Appalachian Fault. A slight uptick from the aftershocks that have been happening here since that New Madrid quake. And this 4.4 is one of the biggest quakes in decades in this region. Almost a decade ago, there was a uh, 4.5 up here near Washington, D.C. <clears throat> but that was far away from the New Madrid center here. We're getting close to the main epicenter of the complex. And this, I'm sure, is raising eyebrows. Is your eyebrow raised? Mine is. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Raventador Torialba Sakurajima, a.k.a. Sakurajima. And we also have... Santa Huito, Fuego, Shivaluch, potentially erupting. And others, no major eruptions, but we have excellent footage that hikers filmed studying Fuego eruption back on November 24th, which is about two and a half, three weeks ago. This made the headlines after the deadly earth, uh, eruption that happened earlier in the summer. Gorgeous footage here. Let's take a look. He can't keep his camera that still, so. Amazing firebombs. I'll leave you links to all this. You can do your own homework. <coughs> Most importantly, I want you to come over here to Global News. Subscribe. Give them a thumbs up. Say Oppenheimer Ranch sent you. And that's a boom. How do I know it's a boom? Because I just clicked on it. Boom! Are you prepared for what I'm about to tell you? My God, stick with us, kids. We're 20 minutes in and I'm about to blow your mind. Arctic has experienced the five hottest years on record. Five hottest years ever. Whew. But the Greenland ice sheet had the sixth highest ice ever. This year. Wait a minute, that's the opposite. Now, the problem with this is when they're talking hot, they're, they're talking minus 20 degrees instead of minus 30. And what they're trying to do is obfuscate from the truth here and make you buy into the thought that Arctic has experienced hot years which cause ice to melt. But the heat is from minus 30 versus minus 20, which I don't know if you know is 20 degrees below freezing. 
So it has nothing to do with melting. And up here it says, we're melting. So they couldn't be, fur they're lying to you in plain sight here. The hottest years on record are during the winter when the temperature is 20 degrees below freezing. Not in the summer. Some of the coldest summers on record. The winters are warmer, but they're still 20 degrees below freezing. And up here it says, <coughs> we're melting. You're not melting at 20 degrees below freezing, even though it's 10 degrees hotter than 30 degrees below freezing. Frauds. The media are frauds. The Daily Beast, frauds. Known frauds. Goodbye. Goodbye. Arctic record warming, which is 20 degrees below freezing, is driving broad change in environment, says major fraud study, which was funded by the frauds that put a polar bear here because polar bears are at record populations and they even need to start killing them in some cities because there's too many. Persistent heat at negative 20 C has rattled the fragile Arctic. Ow! How much are you paying these people? This is from your book, right? You know we burned that. Yeah, a listener sent it in. We burned it. Right in the fireplace. <laughs> now, the Global Warming Policy Forum that hosted Dr. Valentina Zarkova last month is quickly covering their asses. And they're putting out this shite. Solar cycle 25 will not lead to cooling of global temps, study predicts. Now, let me remind you that these two Indian scientists were wrong predicting the last cycle as well as 99.5% of all solar scientists that got cycle 24 wrong. Valentina Zarkova got it right. The Global Warming Policy Forum got it wrong. And they got it wrong again. And you can see global mean temps dropping off a cliff here. Global mean temps are dropping while this place is still called the Global Warming Policy Forum. Where's your linear up, up, up hockey shtick, kids? Temperature's been dropping off since 2016. And you won't even show the 2018 data. Frauds. And now you're going to sell out Zarkova by claiming the Center for Excellence in Space Science in India has something to say? Guess what? They were wrong when predicting cycle 24. <laughs> so why would we believe them now, a decade later? Why are they right now? How come you don't explain how they changed their methodology? Because they didn't. It's the same method they used to predict it incorrectly last cycle. So we're going to use it again because it's 50-50 chance and we're already schmucks. <laughs> And who cares? We got funding because we said it's going to... Global warming is what we said. We got 50 grand. Scumbags of the earth. Scientists have become the scumbags of the earth because they have to lie, sell their souls for funding so they can continue their career, which is a farce. And the biggest threat to their career is the truth, which means their whole life has been a lie. And they want to die under the guise that their life has been a success, spending your hard-earned tax money to publish garbage that's not even science. <laughs> Karma's a bitch. The worst year to be a human has been revealed. And we talked about this in no third week in November. November 12th, when it first got broke. But many of you are well behind and continuing to flood my email box with this story. Let me assure you that we covered this the day it came out, like all important topics. <clears throat> now, 
back in 536 AD, it was the beginning of a terrible sequence of events for humankind. Low solar activity, cosmic ray flux, led to a massive volcanic eruption that spewed a huge cloud of ash and shrouded the northern hemisphere in darkness, caused a drop in temperatures that led to crop failure, starvation, And just six years later, the bubonic plague took foot, reducing the population epically. And this is the type of historical documentation that we use, coupled with scientific proxy data, solar cycles, ocean currents, to make the prediction that the next decade is not going to be much better than this decade. Talked about in this article where there will be links below if you haven't seen it. Now, the good stuff. Stick with us. Where Can I get it? We've been talking about the Geminids which peak 13th, the night of the 13th, tomorrow night into your Friday morning, Thursday night to your Friday morning, the Geminids will peak and Comet Warrington on the 16th will be at its closest approach ever and be the brightest naked eye visible comet in your entire lifetime to be followed up by many more electric comets coming in the coming years which we will cover now let's get to the video check this out last night insane what you're going to see is a Gemini meteor and here's Comet Warrington 46P here the plasma glow in the back and wait till you see this Gemini and the tail that's where it hit our ionosphere in the top of our entire life-saving cones. This is where the burning up happened, right at the ionospheric stratospheric boundary where it lit up. Just amazing. Look at that Geminid. Boom! And here's a little comet. That is just some amazing footage. I could watch it all day. Let's just blaze this fatty. Amazing. Look at the colors. Red with white and green in the back. Plasma discharge much. Phaethon orbits the sun every 17 months or so, leaving a trail of debris. 3,200 Phaethon, and that's G the Geminids. When Earth passes through the tail, the sand grain sized meteoroids are vaporized in our atmosphere as spectacular meteors. Come to get the facts. We've been talking about them. Now the Greenland ice sheet is the sixth highest on record. Here's some more facts. The global warming alarmists refuse to look at them. In 2018, the Greenland's total surface mass budget was 150 billion tons above the average for the last 30 years. Ranking it as a totally insane year. Totally. If you want to know more about it, do your own research. We're 30 minutes in. Are you prepared? I am. I'm getting more prepared every day. One step at a time, one thing at a time, one day at a time. I'm getting more prepared. I'm getting so prepared that at some point, I won't ever have to leave my homestead. <clears throat> now, during the event that will cause the grid to fail or many other systems to fluctuate, you want to be connected. So what we're going to be adding to the store is three sections. CB radio technology, shortwave radio technology, and we're even going to be putting some long wave radios, ham radios in an entire section. Hams and antennas. But we're going to start with CB radios. It's quite extensive. I did a lot of research. There's over 30 products in here, all top of the line. I recommend anything that comes from President Electronics. They're getting the highest ratings worldwide over the last 12 months. Five stars in most cases. 
complete satisfaction and they're incredibly small and compact. Here's a four by four inch by less than one inch unit, 40 channel <coughs> CB radio for 90 bucks, free shipping. And uh, let me just dab you into another model here for 29 bucks. If you don't have a lot of money and you want a CB in your vehicle, this is getting four stars, just reduced with free shipping. The Uniden Pro 505 XL. It's also pretty small. Instant emergency, channel nine, external speaker jack. Easy to read display. 29 bucks. Do it. We're gonna talk more communications as we go. <clears throat> what I wanna to talk to you about is an, a major announcement that uh, Rex Bear and I are making about some ideas we've been talking about and we've been working, I've been working on this for over a decade. And it is, what is a sustainable city? And it would be a city that needs no corporate interests, no large scale corporate infrastructure as far as energy, inputs, nothing. It would be a city that you would have to build ground up where everything inside the city is everything you need. So you don't ever have to go outside to look for anything. Where you have your own water conservation, your own waste reduction and recycling, your own local food production. So everything is close. There's no shipping needed. Everything you're eating is grown on site. All the animals are grown on site. You have your own renewable energy being produced with wind and solar, water, Micro hydro, all local, green building design, including earthship design, subsurface design, wallapinis, anything that you can think of, throm walls, south facing, passive solar, electric charging stations, free electricity everywhere. That would be a sustainable city. They don't exist. <clears throat> but this valley does. And this valley, which we've called Secret Valley, is over a square mile. Hundreds of acres. And we want to build the first autonomous, sustainable city in this valley. Separate from all corporate control We will own the entire valley. The entire valley will have its own energy resources, its own water supply, its own food production systems, its own security, its own laws, its own roads, its own infrastructure created by us. And who is us? The people that want to live here. We only need 20 people, but we need a diverse group of 20. And the 20 people that want to live here have to buy land here because Rex and I own it. So the idea is to lease you 10 or 20 acres. It's your choice depending on your vision. It's $1,000 an acre for 15 years. And then we will give you the option to buy the land for the same price you paid for the lease after 15 years. If there is no government or no grid, then it's all ours. And there's no need to buy in. But if you want to buy in now, we're talking hundreds of acres, a square mile, 100 miles from any humans. The nearest city has a population of 450. There is a cutting edge mainstream hospital just 30 minutes away with a small city less than 10,000. It is in the ultimate geophysical area, in the ultimate temperate zone. It never gets below 10 degrees here. Never gets above 90. It's listed as a temperate rainforest tropical 
zone six to eight, abundant wildlife. Secret Valley. If you want 10 acres, 10,000. If you want 20 acres, 20,000. We need master carpenters. We need master plumbers. We need surveyors. We need artists. We need farmers. We need 20 people that have money. Not enough money to buy their own homestead. But we're talking at $1,000 an acre, a secure wilderness that we build the first autonomous, sustainable city together. And everyone wants to know how we're doing it. We capture our own sun, our own water. We grow our own wood. It's the city of the future. If you want in, email oppenheimerranch at gmail.com. Links below. Your qualifications. You need to have money to purchase this land now. It's going to happen in the next 14 days. One square mile in an undisclosed location that will never be disclosed will be the creation of the first sustainable city ever. That's the view. There is no one there but us. All owned by us. Built by us. Slackers need not apply. This is going to take a lifetime of work. Non-stop labor. Non-stop dedication. To make this utopia. The Secret Valley Sustainable City will happen. If you want to be part of it, we're only accepting 20 candidates. You need $10,000 or $20,000 to buy in. And each $1,000 guarantees your parcel for the rest of your life. You have my word. This is the cheapest and the most incredible opportunity that your little bit of money will make you. And your 20 acres is the whole parcel. Because we're going to be sharing our knowledge and our sustainability as we grow. No money in this valley. We will never have a currency. Sweat equity only. I grow lettuce. You're the blacksmith. I need something welded. You get free food. You see how it works. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. There are no restrictions on this land. You can bring anything you want. You can build a pyramid. You can build a teepee. You can build a rocket ship. There are no restrictions on this parcel. We can do whatever we want. Look at the topography. <laughs> Look at the remoteness. The possibilities are endless. That's all I can tell you. We will be eco-friendly. We'll use solar power. This will be a sustainable, ecological, unheard of, self-contained, the first of its kind. We will be the model. Do you want to join us? Send me a resume, your skill set, and if you want 10 or 20 acres. You need the money this week. If you don't have the money this week, do not email me. I know there are 20 people out there that have this money this week. So there are no side deals or side negotiations. If you have 10 or 20 grand and you want to be part of Secret Valley, email Oppenheimer Ranch at Gmail at the end of this video. Tell me your skill set and why you want to be part of this first ever autonomous, sustainable city hidden in the Secret Valley. <coughs> Thank you.
And that's a boom. We love each and every one of you. We think this opportunity can grow. If these 20 people return, if we get the right 20 people now, we're going to make another city in just one year. And we're going to repeat this process until each and every one of you can be in a safe place with like-minded people to get on with living. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom.